All right. Let's get this review over with. Gosh, I, I can't stand this CPU. Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Tech Tested. Today we're going to be reviewing a really cheap 16 core AMD CPU. Stay buckled in because this one's quite a bit of a ride. The CPU in question is the AMD Opteron 6276. Now you may have seen these CPUs for sale on sites like AliExpress, where you get a bundle with a CPU cooler, a motherboard, and the processor. I was curious how this CPU would perform, so I picked up a bundle from AliExpress, including the aforementioned CPU cooler, motherboard, and processor. Now this is marketed as being on the x89 platform. Now this platform never technically existed. Intel had the X79 platform for its LGA 2011 CPUs, and it had the X99 platform for its LGA 2011 V3 CPUs. My suspicions are that AliExpress marketed this platform as X89 in order to increase sales. So I opened the box for the motherboard and got what you would basically expect. There was an IO shield and a SATA cable. Digging further and opening up the bag for the motherboard, we saw that the CPU was already installed. Not a bad touch on a LAN grid array setup. That helps prevent you, the end user, from accidentally bending pins when installing the CPU. Now this CPU is actually quite large. It's actually almost double the size of a standard AMD CPU. I was pleasantly surprised by the IO. There are plenty of USB ports on the back and it has support for NVMe storage, as well as a front panel header for USB 3. It does only have two RAM slots, but that's not a really big deal seeing as how this CPU supports ECC registered memory, and you can get eight gigabyte sticks for that motherboard at a reasonable price. Next up, I unbox the CPU cooler, and I ran into a little bit of an issue. One of the screws on the CPU cooler had punched through the box in shipping, and I was forced to basically rip apart the box in order to remove the CPU cooler. Upon removal, I noticed both of the fans were facing to blow air into the CPU cooler, which is not ideal for airflow. You want one fan blowing in and one fan blowing out. So I was forced to turn around one of those fans, which isn't a big deal, but just keep that in mind if you order one of these setups. Next, I noticed the fan connector was quite short and I again had to rearrange the CPU fans in order to make it reach the CPU fan header. A slightly longer cable would have been very much appreciated. It also doesn't come pre-installed with a motherboard battery, so that's another thing you'll have to keep in mind, but this is very typical of motherboards shipped from AliExpress. Once I got everything hooked up, I went into the BIOS and immediately noticed that there were no overclocking features available. I was kind of aware of this, I've done some research on this platform, and it seems to be a common complaint among people who have purchased it. Now, if you're familiar with this channel, you know I really like overclocking, so that was a bit of a bummer. However, there are software utilities that can be used for overclocking. So I was a little bit optimistic that I might be able to get one of those working. However, after roughly four hours of trying multiple programs to overclock this CPU, I had zero luck. I tried Asus overclocking utilities, which wouldn't install because this isn't an Asus motherboard. I tried using PS Check, which is a proprietary AMD overclocking software, and that failed as well. It has a locked multiplier and PS Check does not allow you to increase the base frequency. So after beating my head against the desk for a few hours, I finally decided to let it go. I was not going to be able to overclock this CPU. What that means is we're stuck at a base clock speed of 2.3 gigahertz and a max turbo speed for all cores at 2.6. Supposedly it can boost higher than that on a single threaded load. However, I never saw anything above 2.6 gigahertz and most of the time it sat at 2.3. So this is where things start to get really frustrating. Cinebench R15 is a great program for testing the capabilities of your CPU. So first up, I decided to test the multi-core score. And with 16 cores, we got a score of 666. That's a 
devil CPU. That's really bad. What I typically look for is 100 points per core, meaning it would have been nice to see 1600 points on this CPU. Now, I knew that was unrealistic given the clock speeds. However, less than 50 points per CPU core is absolutely unacceptable. Next up, I had to test the single threaded performance and it was so bad. The best single threaded score I got was 58 points. Now, let me put that into perspective for you. A Core 2 Quad Q6600 at its stock 2.4 gigahertz gets a single threaded score of 62 points. An Athlon 64 X2 3000 Plus at three gigahertz gets 64 points. A Phenom 2 clocked at 3.6 gigahertz gets a single threaded score of 92 points. My basic rule of thumb is for any sort of gaming, you really want at least 90 points, preferably 100 points in your single threaded score. And we were at almost half of that. Now, this wouldn't have been such a big deal if we could overclock. The CPU cooler was actually keeping our CPU nice and cool, never exceeding about 44 degrees Celsius. Now we could call it quits there because it's very clear this CPU would not be good for gaming, being beaten out by CPUs several years older than it that are much easier to attain. However, I did want to verify my results. So I decided to slap in my R9 290X and run Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now I know this isn't the newest game, but it does have several advantages. It has DirectX 12 mode, which in theory could utilize all 16 of our CPU cores, maybe giving us a best case scenario. It also has DirectX 11 mode, which would give us a good representation of how it would work in a lot of games that are still produced on that API. So I tested it in DirectX 12 mode first. On the low presets, we got an average frame rate of 42 frames per second. The low settings were designed to represent a CPU bottleneck and we were clearly hitting one. So I decided to ramp up the settings to the high preset and we got an average frame rate of 41 frames per second. That one frame per second is negligible and could vary from run to run, meaning we are still seeing a CPU bottleneck. Switching to DirectX 11 mode, I reran the benchmark and we saw an average frame rate of 29 frames per second on the low presets. Switching it to our high presets, we saw an average frame rate of 28 frames per second. That one frame per second is still probably a run to run variant and does not indicate any GPU bottleneck. We are still heavily bound by the CPU. Now, as tempting as it is to run the CPU through a gamut of games, it's very clear to me that this is just not a good CPU for gaming or even multitasking. Now I'm gonna go on a bit of a rant and deviate from my outline because I want to be very clear how I feel about this CPU. I'm a legitimate AMD fanboy. I was rocking an AMD FX CPU for the longest time. My first CPU was an Athlon 64X2 3000 plus. And seeing as how AMD is rocking it right now with their Ryzen chips, I really wanted this thing to perform better than it did. I was gonna give it every benefit of the doubt I could. The time I spent trying to overclock this thing should indicate how much I really wanted this thing to perform great. Still, at the end of the day, it's really a bad platform to get into. It's a cool novelty. For $100, you would think, man, this is a great deal. But there's so many better platforms you can get into at that price range. Even on AliExpress, there are much better options. Almost any X58 or X79 CPU is gonna outperform this thing in multi and single threaded performance. It is a 16 core CPU, albeit only eight modules. However, the X89 branding is a little bit misleading. To someone who's less familiar, they might think it performs somewhere between an X79 CPU and an X99 CPU, and that is just simply not the case. Also, an unsuspecting buyer might see a 16 core AMD CPU at a great price and think it's built on the same architecture as Ryzen. So while technically not a scam, I really want to warn anyone that's looking into buying this platform to definitely consider other options first. I see basically no benefit to this setup at this price point. Now there are faster 16 core Opterons that will fall into this socket. However, we've done a lot of testing on the bulldozer architecture and we'll link those videos either up here or in the description. And we've seen that they just don't hold up today. So in conclusion, much to my disappointment, this CPU fell well below my expectations and I definitely suggest you go find something else. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, follow us on our social media platforms and check out our Discord and our website so you can pick yourself up some of our new tech tests and merch.